Good morning, St Jude's. My name is Debs and I'm on the staff team at St Jude's Church. And I'm really pleased to be leading your collective worship this morning, although it's a shame we can't be together, but hopefully soon. So this morning we're going to be thinking about um, another of the stories that Jesus told us, or the parables as they're called. And we're going to just be thinking about the story of the prodigal son, or in some Bibles they call it the lost son. But before we start, let's light a candle to remind ourselves that Jesus is the light of the world. And then we'll pray together. Lord Jesus, shine through us today. Amen. Now I'm just going to put the candle out of the way over here. There we go. Okay. So before we start, let's just think, why does, why does Jesus tell us stories? What does he want us to do with them? So perhaps pause now, pause the video for a couple of minutes and just chat amongst yourselves and think about those two questions. Why does Jesus tell us stories and what does he want us to do with them? Okay, so I wonder what sort of things you came up with. I think that Jesus tells us stories for several reasons. I think most of us enjoy listening to stories, especially if the person telling the story is a good storyteller. And I think Jesus was. And I think that's why so many people wanted to come and listen to him. And I think also that it's easier sometimes to remember a story than if you're just given a whole load of information or some rules or something. But I think as well that Jesus wants us to think about the story and he wants us to think about what we can learn from that story. Because we can remember it more easily, perhaps we also then will remember to think about what it means. So we're going to listen to the story for this week. The Lost Son. A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. So the father divided the property between the two sons and then the younger son gathered up all that was his and he left. He travelled far away to another country. There he wasted his money in foolish living and he spent everything that he had. Soon after that the land became very dry and there was no rain. There wasn't enough food to eat anywhere in the country. The son was hungry and he needed some money. So he got a job. The farmer sent the son into the fields to feed the pigs and the son was so hungry that he was willing to eat the food that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. And then the son realised that he had been very foolish. He thought, all of my father's servants have plenty of food, but here am I almost dying with hunger. I will leave and I will return to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm not good enough to be called your son, but let me be like one of your servants. So the son left and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. He felt sorry for his son and he loved him. So he ran to him and he hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm not good enough to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, hurry, 
bring the best clothes and put them on him and also put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fat calf and kill it. Then we can have a feast to celebrate. My son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but now he is found. So they began to celebrate. Now I love this story. It's such a good story and maybe it's one that you've heard before. But the beauty of the Bible is that actually there's always so much more to learn. So what can we learn today? How does it make a difference to us if we know that story? The story is called The Lost Son. But what does it mean to be lost? Well, I think on one level, being lost can be a bit like if you're trying to go somewhere and you're not quite sure where it is. Maybe, maybe you can remember trying to go to a new place and you're trying to follow a map or some directions and actually they don't, they don't really seem to make sense. You must have taken a wrong turning somewhere along the way and, and you find yourself not knowing which way to go. Well, that's one way of being lost, isn't it? But I think also sometimes, imagine that you've got something that's really important to you and you're trying to do it, you're trying to make it happen, but everything has gone wrong and you just don't know what to do. Sometimes that can, that can feel like being lost. And or perhaps you wanna try and fix something, but you can't. I know that as a mum, I always want to fix things for my children. I want things to be right for them. I want things to be easy. I want to make things smooth and perfect for them, but I can't do that. Or maybe it might be with your friends. Sometimes you see them suffering or you see them struggling and thing, everything seems to be going wrong for them. And you want to make things right, but you can't because there isn't actually anything that you can do and so sometimes that can make you feel a bit lost. And in the story, the son was lost, wasn't he? He was far from his home and his family, so his relationships were all broken. And everything was going wrong for him. He was hungry and he was lonely. So what does, this, what does Jesus tell us in the story? What did the son do? Well, he remembered his father. And he decided to go back to his father and to say sorry and to say how silly he'd been and that actually he'd been really foolish to leave. And of course, from the story, we know that his father was looking out for him and that his father loved him and he forgave him immediately and he welcomed him back into the family. And of course, in this story, the father represents God, our heavenly father. So perhaps Jesus told us this story so that when we're feeling lost, we will remember it. And we'll remember what the son did in that he turned back to his father. He went, he went to find his father who loved him and who welcomed him and who forgave him. And maybe when we're lost, we can try and remember that actually we need to look to the father because when we're with him, we're not lost. So I'm going to pray now and I'd like you to, to listen. And if you agree, then say Amen at the end. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the stories that you tell us. Thank you that we can still talk about them now and that they can teach us how to live well. Thank you that if we are feeling lost, we can look to you knowing that you love us and care about us. Help us also to look out for those who are feeling lost or lonely and to help them. Amen. And so let's finish by praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we'll finish by singing a song together. Jump back.
God's love is big, God's love is great. 